God for being here tonight. Such a wonderful God. I am just grateful to be here tonight, but I am not preaching the word of God. We have someone that is ready and able to preach the word. The word is ready and it is ready to go. This woman of God, I love her. I've known her for many, 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 many years. She's my helpmate. She's my wife. She's also one a writer, author. She's a powerful minister of the word of God. Come and preach or teach the word of God, Lady J, as the Lord leads you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise him again. Praise, Lord. Praise God for Pastor Jones. Praise God that everybody came out today. And we're going to talk on, on a topic today. Uh, the old prophets, the prophets of old versus the pop prophets of today. The prophets of old versus the prophets of today. It's a big difference. It's a big difference in the prophets of old and the prophets of day of today. You know, I just took the time when the new year came in and, and usually when the new year come in, there's a whole bunch of prophetic encounters, prophetic conferences, <laughs> prophetic yada yada. And um, people just randomly just have this prophetic something for the people, all of which are not pulling the people to God or turning the people back to God. Most of the prophecies that you hear today is usually something uh, material. It has something to do with housing, lands, cars, and things in the natural, and it don't have much to do with your soul. And the Bible tells us that the things down here are temporal, but the things that are in heaven are eternal. So. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk, and you know, I, I really feel like there's a lot of prophetic, uh, people that had a prophetic gift, even in our midst, you know, and we got to realize that this mouth is important. You got to, you got to be careful how you use your mouth. Okay, so Paul, he was very anointed, and he wrote a great portion of the New Testament, and yet he admitted when he was speaking something that was coming from him. And when he was speaking something that was coming from God, you know, several places in the Bible, he made a distinction. He's saying, hey, I'm telling you this. It ain't, ain't, you know, God didn't inspire me per se, but I'm going to take the word and I'm going to take something clean from God. And I'm just going to try to encourage you with it. And so I want to put a disclaimer out there. It doesn't have to be necessarily. Boom, I got an inspiration and that's the only time that I can speak for God. No, I can take any part of this Bible from Genesis to Revelation to tell you what's right. The Bible said through the multitude of counsel there is safety. You know, the Bible talks about wisdom. And so that lets you know that we can speak and it's not necessarily inspired that second, but I can take the Holy Word and I can instruct you in the ways of God. We all agree with that? We all want to call all right, so here's an example of something Paul said. First Corinthians, I'm going I'm to read these verses, those that's taking notes. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. It says, but to the rest, I, the, to the rest be I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe him not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So he's saying, God didn't tell me this, but I'm just saying, you know, if you come up upon this situation, this is a good thing to do. He said, you know, if a brother have a wife that believe him not, and she be pleased, you know, if you got a wife and she not saved, and she pleased to be with you, leave her alone. Don't put your wife away. What's wrong with that? He said, this ain't God saying it. This is me saying it, right? Another place Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 7, 25. He said, now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that have obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Here again, I didn't get no lightning that struck me or some some chill go down my spine that inspired me to tell you this, but I'm speaking from experience. You know, God, I've obtained mercy. God has kept me. So let me tell you something from what? Experience. You see that? Okay. So 2 Timothy 3.16 It says, all scripture is given by, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 11.17 That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Once again, Paul is saying, this is not the Lord. This is Paul. Ain't that mature? But you know, prophets of our day, they just say everything that come to their mind and they say all of it is the Lord. I mean, 
This is what I love about it. I can respect somebody that's saying, you know, this didn't come from heaven. I'm just trying to tell you something, Minister Glover. I just want to tell you what the Lord love, okay? But today, prophets, everything they say, I don't care if it's peanut butter and jelly, I don't care if it's whatever it is, they're going to attack the Lord name on it and they're going to say, thus said the Lord. We got to be careful. We got to be careful with that. So that's what I love about Paul. He made a distinction. If I tell somebody, if I tell a young woman, and I say, you know, a woman should guide the house. Therefore, you need to be not trying to work, but you need to, you know, you're being fruitful, you're multiplying, because by the time you finish working, most of your check gonna go to daycare. Did that come from the Lord? No, but most of your check gonna go to daycare. Amen. <laughs> Do you, come on, y'all. That's the truth. Everything don't have to be thus said the Lord. It's just going to find itself. It's going to bear out to be true if you wait a while, right? Okay, now let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3.16. We got to be careful. I think this is the beginning of the year. You know, the world makes New Year resolutions and this whole list, I'm going to die. Everybody going to die the first of the year. They probably go into it maybe three weeks and then after that, it's back to, you know, whatever. I'm going I'm to I'm get me a Bible plan and I'm going to do this and then in a few weeks into it, you start doing something else. And so we are constantly making habits, but we don't fulfill them. Second Timothy, are we in 316? It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine and for what else? Reproof and what else? Correction and what? Instructions and what? And righteousness. Why? That the man of God be what? Perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So even though I may not be inspired by God to say a certain thing, all scriptures is inspired by God. Therefore, we need to respect the scripture, whether it's coming from, a, 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 you know, directly from God right now, or somebody just giving you the word. You should respect what the word say, because the word is higher than us, right? Okay, so it says all scripture, every last one of them, was inspired by God. What is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for us. So the scripture is profitable for us, period. No matter what the circumstances, no matter the reason why they presented to us, they are profitable for what? They are profitable for us. So, if I'm speaking truth, it may not be coming from God that second, but all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which is a belief or a set of teaching, reproof, rebuke, which is reprimand, reproach, you know, disapproval, correction, a change, right? So let's move, let's go to another scripture. Even though God was not speaking through Paul per se, he was not, Paul was not speaking in the flesh. So the three scriptures that we went where Paul was saying, this is not God, it may not have been coming from God, but he wasn't speaking in the flesh. He was speaking things that are true. So, uh, it, you know, the things that we say, it's going to be under the umbrella of a lie or the umbrella of a truth. Okay. So let's go to 2 Peter. Most of the time you see prophets and people just speaking to us, speaking to us, speaking to us, speaking to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they sell their English. Yeah, 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 yeah. They sell their English. Yeah, 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 yeah. They sell their English. What is that? Man, just tell me what the Lord said. I cannot imagine Jeremiah doing all that when he was prophesying to them folks and telling them they better get right. I just can't, I can't, I can't imagine it. The prophets of old and the prophets of today, it's just so different. And Lord knows, y'all know I speak in tongues probably more than you all. I love speaking in tongues, but that's not prophecy. That's not prophecy. Maybe you trying to operate in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Okay? Go ahead and tell us what you said. Because if you're speaking in tongues and you have not given us the utterance in English, you are out of order. Hello in the holiness church. See, we got to bring some understanding, otherwise we looking crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Okay, so what happened? Now you done made all of us get quiet. We listen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you know what I'm saying? When you hear somebody just going forth and talk like that, it's like, hey, pump the brakes. <laughs> Man, we've been playing. The people been playing the organ while folks preaching so long to when it's drop dead silent in church, they think the Lord ain't moving. God is trying to tell us, so we got to get out of this stuff and stop. You know, putting the Lord's name on everything. We got to stop being out of order and acting like we in order. And because speaking tongues is in the Bible, we think that it's okay because we do it. Either the Lord is speaking or the Lord is not. There's no middleman. There's no in-between. Either God is speaking or he not. I'm getting y'all ready because this January and all these revivals finna get started. All these prophets finna start coming to town. They finna start forming these lines. Now you can go and be with, be, uh, be witched if you want to. <laughs> but y'all ain't gonna be able to say that y'all got y'all word. Y'all didn't get y'all word for the for the year, okay? You better watch this stuff because this stuff is foolishness. And I'm not saying that people don't hit and miss. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they hit. But what I'm trying to say is, if you go back and if anybody has read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the prophets of old was not talking about houses. Now there was a place in the Bible where he said, you gonna sit in your steel houses while this house lay waste. What? Why we don't ever hear that prophecy? Whoa! See, everybody wanna talk about a new house, but I don't never hear nobody prophesying that God is saying, you put too much attention on your house and not enough attention on the house of the Lord. See, that's prophecy. That's what Hosea said. And I can't see Hosea carrying on the way people, you know, in Facebook Live to mess folks up. Lord God, we got prophets rising up from ooh, the north, south, east, and the west. If you want to get a word, just log into Facebook tonight. Ah, you going to get you a word from the Lord. I'm talking about these prophets is rising up. They got, they coming from all over the place. All you got to do is log in and you're going to get a prophetic word. You can't live holy for a minute, but you got a prophetic utterance. Smoking cigarettes, but you got a prophetic utterance. God don't need no prophet to come tell you you're going to get a house. All you got to do is keep your credit straight. You're going to get a house. Now, this ain't funny no more. This is the No, no, no. This ain't funny no more now. See, God don't need no prophet to come tell us about something natural. Because it says the wealth, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the who? The just. Okay, we're going we gonna to get something tonight. We're we going to be ready. Y'all hear me? We're going to be ready tonight. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. How you think we have these suits that cost $300? And we paid $5.50 for it. Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Ain't no holes in it. Ain't no bad skin. How you think we wear space to Adams? And we paid $2.50 for it. Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Hello? Hello? Why you think you got that bad couch in your house? And you went and paid $75 for it. But the person who bought it. Hey! Glory, hallelujah. We didn't mess this prophecy thing up. Uh -uh. I want to know if I'm right. I want to know if I'm holy. I want to know do I have any wrinkles. I want to know do I have any blemishes. I want to know if there's any such thing that's not like Christ inside of me. That's what a prophet is for. That's right. Hello. So, 2 Peter. All right. Let's go to 2 Peter, first, chapter 1. So, don't be ashamed. You wearing your secondhand stuff. Don't let them go spend 300 for it. And see, that ungrateful spirit had them go turn it into the goodwill. Ain't that good enough. Oh, let me just, this is just a bunch of junk now. They take the goodwill and we come in there. Sk, sk, sk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, say a little prayer. Lord, if they did any sin in this, Lord, anything happened on this couch that 
among you. Oh God, anything happening in this bed that went holy, the blood of Jesus sanctified and keep on rolling. <laughs> See that? See that? So 2 Peter 1, 19, we have also a more what? Sure word. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that you would take heed as unto a light that shineth in darkness. If you get up in your house in the middle of the night and all the lights off, you're going to be groping to get to the light switch. And that's how it need to be when God people is speaking to us. It need to be how you getting to get to the light so you can see better. You need to understand that when prophets come forth, it's coming to shine light in dark places. That's what prophecy is for. So it says, as unto a light that shining in dark in a dark place, until the day done, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any what? Private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but by who? Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the way. Holy Ghost. And somebody jumped corn on me. See, did you hear it say holy men of God? That means women ain't supposed to be speaking. Man, you ain't reading the Bible. He said the last day he going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. See, that's why you got to stop following false prophets. That's why you got to be careful when people that's trying to push their agenda with the word of God. It said as it moved on, a uh, holy man. You don't know that about Holder? Did you know that Aaron's sister was a prophetess? Come on here. There were prophetess in the Bible just like there were prophets in the Bible. You're going to take one scripture that Paul said, be silent. If I be silent, how am I saying? If I'm going to be, hey, 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 hey. If I be silent, how am I praying? Silent means silent. Everybody be quiet. That's silent. If that's what he meant, that ain't humanly possible. And that ain't the New Testament church. Ha! Ha! That ain't the New Testament church. No, no, no. That ain't the church that was birthed out in Acts chapter 2. So go get your one scripture from Paul and go sit down and pray till you're ready to receive the whole Bible. Woo! Go ahead and sit down. God said, don't usurp authority. Man, how are you usurping authority? My husband gave me authority. Do you know who you said me? You snatched that thing. I'm going to preach up in here. I don't care what you say, Pastor John. That's why you serve me a brother, huh? God bless you, baby. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So we got to stop. Twisting the scripture for our benefit. All right. 